Tim Bartz here, Ford Video Guy, with a video here on my Bronco. So my 2021 Ford Bronco has arrived. Uh, if you follow me over on the Lon MacArthur Facebook or Lon MacArthur YouTube channel, uh, you'll have probably have already seen a post where I've talked about it several times in our live streams and such. Uh, but I wanted to put this video out on my personal channel because this is a video on my Bronco that is not for sale, by the way. Uh, so we're going to have a little fun with this. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that uh, the uh, subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that way you get notified next time I have another video uploaded to the channel. I know I haven't been doing too many videos recently because uh, most of my videos are kind of more of a more personal basis than anything. And I know that I promised uh, before in the past, if you've stuck with me for a long time, that I was going to do kind of a, a video on a little bit of background behind uh, who I am, what I do, and, you know, personal uh, type of video, and I'm starting to get a lot more people to the channel, so we'll probably do that here real uh, soon. Uh, but I'm going to do some videos on the Bronco, so I'm going to do a couple different videos uh, here in the next several weeks. Uh, first one I'm going to do right now is we're going to do a walk around on this Bronco, how I ordered it, why I ordered what I did, uh, those kind of things. Also, we're going to do a probably eventually we'll do a test drive video. Where we're going to drive it. I want to. See, uh, I've I've already driven it, but kind of more of a, a view so you guys can see it as well. And then we're gonna. I took down the top, so I'm going to show you uh, that video as well. We're going to do a video on that, uh, and as well as the doors. But I'm waiting on the doors till I get some the door covers. I did not order it from the factory, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So we're going to do several videos on this, plus I'm going to do some upfitting to this as well. I got a Roush, uh, my name on a Roush package for this. I'm only doing 50 for this year, and I have one reserved that is coming in uh, to Law MacArthur, so we're going to put that on probably in December, because I think this is December 1 is when those should arrive. So we're going to be getting those and probably be putting that on in December. So we'll be doing that video as well. So a lot of videos on the Bronco here, so hopefully you do like this. Um, so several just you know more in, in individual on my personal Bronco and some things that I kind of what I like about it and some things like that so we're going to enjoy uh, several videos on this so hope you do like that and if you do uh, go ahead and smash that like button I really appreciate it helps the video out and helps get the channel out there as well so again uh, thanks for watching this a lot of you probably do uh, watch some of the videos on the Law MacArthur YouTube channel and that's why you subscribe to the channel those that subscribed a long time ago uh, sorry I haven't been putting a lot of videos out but uh, it's really difficult for me to figure out since you know most of my edging everything I do is for on vehicles, Ford vehicles and such, uh, and it's hard to decide if I want to put this on the Law MacArthur channel or on my personal channel, and I decided on all these about the, my own personal Bronco. We're going to do those on this channel, so hopefully you really enjoy it, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this, uh, this here, we, I did order this as a Big Ben. A little bit of history behind this. Um, when the reservation came up uh, back over a year ago, last, what was it, June, I think, when the reservation opened up, they released, they revealed it. I had just purchased an F-150, a 2020 F-150 a month prior to that. Just had a brand new F-150 and just had all the stuff upfitted onto my F-150. Here's, you know, if you've, you can look at the videos on the channel. I did a lot of videos on the upfit, but I just did that uh, about a month before the reveal of the Bronco. And you know, uh, back when I was younger, I wasn't really a car person. I didn't really, uh, you know, never owned a Bronco. My parents never owned a Bronco. So I really wasn't into the heritage uh, back then. Uh, but the more I got to do videos on the Bronco, the more I decided, boy, I really wish I'd put in a reservation back then. Uh, this is going to put me way behind on getting my vehicle uh, ordered and delivered to me. Um, so I had someone else that actually at the dealership here that put in two orders, one for him and one for his wife. They decided they were only going to do one of the two. So I was going to take his other order. So I was like, phew, well good. That way I don't have to wait so long. I'll take one of those orders. And then in January, then six months later, Ford told dealers, uh-uh, you can't do that. Whoever ordered it, that, that's the name that you have to do, a ma name match. That's the person that has to purchase the vehicle. So I was like, oh man. Okay, I don't want to affect any of the allocations that the dealership gets, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that and take his order. So he canceled that order. I went ahead in January and reserved and flipped over the order. So when I did my uh, my reservation was the day you could actually open up and do orders. So it was like as a bam bam. So I opened up. I think I did the reservation on the 17th, and I think then you could open it up on the 21st to convert it over to order. So. That's when I ordered, I reserved, that's when I ordered. So reserved January 17th, I put my order in the 21st because I actually had been looking for how I wanted mine built. 
Um, so what, think, with that in mind, I also wanted to keep the price down as well. So what I did is I ordered a Big Ben because I, what I like about the Big Ben trim here is that it, it feels like to me like an XLT F-150 in, in equipment. So it's given me some great features, a lot of convenience features, features because it has the mid package available. Uh, and I was kind of on the fence between this and the Black Diamond. Uh, between those two trims. The one thing that I did not like about the, the black diamond was I didn't want the vinyl flooring, which now that I actually seen the black diamond, kind of wish I'd gone that route instead because you can get the mid package with that. But also another deal breaker on the black diamond was that I didn't, I wanted the LED headlights, which was optional, standalone option on the Big Ben tram. So that was, a, that's what really kind of was a deciding factor in going with the Big Ben. So I didn't want to go Outer Banks either. Uh, I really wanted to have that more off-road off rugged look. That's why I didn't go with the body colored fender flares, mirror caps, like you would get on the Outer Banks tram. And that's why I stayed away from that. Decided to go, I was on the fence between two door and four door until I saw the the wheelbase on the two door and thought, I'm not sure how that's gonna drive at the time putting that order in. And I thought this way too, we can put kids in the back a lot easier, grandkids actually in the back a lot easier with the four door. And I think it'll drive a little bit nicer than the, than the two door would. So that's why I decided to go with the four door. So originally I ordered it with the hard top, uh, just like with everyone else in June, when they said they had a struggle getting those, uh, I took that hard top off almost immediately and went with the cloth top. Also, I like the modular front bumper. That, the front bumper from the Black Diamond, I like that. I originally ordered that bumper on this. The same time I took the hard top off, I took the front bumper off thinking, well, maybe I'll get mine scheduled. Because we one thing we did notice is that some of the customers that had a Big Ben and a base trim were getting jumped up over the people with the Badlands, Wild Track, and even Outer Bakes, and even the two doors. So noticing that, I thought, I might get lucky and get scheduled a little sooner if I take off some things. So that's what I did. I took off the modular front bumper and I took off the hard top because I actually wanted a dual top to begin with. So I wanted a cloth top, but I also want to get the hard top and I know I can get that later. And when Ford came out with the news that anything scheduled and built after September would get the wiring, that was, uh, I was like, okay, well, that's great because that's exactly the way I want it to go. So that's kind of what I did, went four door. Also, I stuck with the 2.3 liter, wasn't because of what Ford said. It was just because I've seen what the 2.3 uh, liter feels like. You know, get in, or I, I knew that if I got a, a, crew, a Super Crew Ranger with a 2.3 and how powerful that is on the Ranger, this is built on the same platform. It's gonna drive just fine. It's gonna have plenty of power for what I need. Uh, and if it's really is more of an off-road vehicle than my daily driver, I don't need the 2.7 liter. I don't need to race this thing. I'm not gonna go Baja racing with it. I knew the 2.3 liter is gonna have plenty of power. And, and after driving it, I am very pleased uh, of my choice there. I, the, you know, if you're on the fence on that, I think you're gonna be pleased on the power and performance of the 2.3 liter. I'm very uh, confident. I'm very, I love, love it. Uh, I get up to 40 miles an hour. Um, I beat a lot of cars off the line and this isn't really made to race, but boy, I, I beat them. I can get to 40 in no time flat. So no problem with power and efficiency there, even in normal mode, uh, which is what I like. So that was my uh, goal behind this. I did add the upfitter switches after going to the off rodeo event that we got a chance to go to as dealers in May. I also added the rear locker to this too, cause I wanted to make sure I had that so I could do some off roading with this truck or with this Bronco. Uh, so that's kind of what, what my basis. So let's go ahead and walk around this. So the Big Ben trim, uh, I am actually gonna just give you a bunch of B-roll clips because I don't wanna move this stage around, but you know, on the front, again, this does have the carbonized gray grill up here on the front. Uh, does also have the LED headlights, LED fog lights into, integrated into the bumpers there. And this also does get the, uh, I upgraded for the optional LED Head, or LED signature lighting as well. So I wanted that onto this vehicle. So again, 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, plenty of power with this engine paired with a 10 speed automatic transmission. I did go that route as well. I'm not a person that's very efficient with a manual transmission, never owned. I owned, you know, some manual transmission vehicles, but more, you know, more line of a sports car than uh, something like this. So I decided I just wanted to go with the automatic transmission. That 10 speed is so efficient uh, that I wanted to go that route instead there. Uh, now moving over here to the side, 
Of course, this is, I stuck with the standard wheel because I knew I was going to upgrade and do some upgrades to it other than what is available from the factory. Didn't like any of the uh, factory wheels, so I kind of went, just went with the, the, the wheel that comes standard on it, 17 inch, uh, that magnetic or the uh, magnetic or gray uh, wheels there. And then, of course, you get the 32 inch. Uh, this one has to be the Bridgestone. Uh, all-terrain tires here and they sound great on the road you know they're not loud or noisy or anything of course uh, mo most people probably expected that but i love that it has the normal fender flares on this as well which real easy to twist those off and pull those off maybe i'll do a video on that and how easy it is to do that as well there love the position of the mirrors so this in here does have the mirror position in there so if i want to take the doors off then uh I, the mirrors are still there and functional unlike a jeep this, so we did get the mid package. So with the mid package, you get the Copilot 360 features because I'm a big believer in the Bliss system, that blind spot information system with cross truck alert. Love that system where it monitors your blind spot as well as when you're backing up. So I wanted that. So one, uh, that, that's part of the mid package, uh, but this vehicle has that. So I'm really happy about that. I uh, love that. It's backing up, probably where I see it mostly that it, it kind of saves me is backing up when cars are speeding through those parking lots as I'm pulling backing up into the uh, grocery store or whatever, and then that car's speeding behind me and it goes off and alerts me because they just are going too fast in the parking lots, but a great safety feature to have here. Also, an intelligent access with the push button start. Love that feature as well. I have the key fob here, but I don't have to have it out. You just put the hand in the door handle. It's gonna automatically unlock it. You can see by the flashing lights, uh, the little lock button there allows it to lock the vehicle up. Uh, that is something that we found very convenient. My wife, uh, her Expedition has that feature. I don't with my F-150 and uh, that's just like, she loves just putting the keys in her purse and just getting in it and starting it without having to get the keys out of her purse. Uh, and uh, you know, that's just a, almost a deal saver for us and our family is a vehicle has to have that anymore, it seems like. I also did get the keypad entry because on my truck, uh, I actually like using the keypad and I'll, I'll leave the keys in it. I'll lock it, use the keypad to get in and out of the vehicle. With this one, I haven't used it yet in about two weeks now. Um, have we had about two weeks? About a week and a half, I guess. And I have yet to use the keypad or even program the keypad yet. Um, I thought I could program it through the screen, but evidently if you get the optional keypad, not the integrated keypad on the door, then you have to program it on the outside. So I have yet to program that, but uh, I wanted that keypad in case I wanted to leave the keys in it, I can lock it up and do that, uh, which will come in real handy. So uh, again, cloth top here, uh, I'll do a video on how that uh, opens up uh, real easy. Uh, I, very first time ever trying this, I took these three panels off and lowered it down in five minutes. It was so easy to do, even the very first time doing it. Um, not, you know, I had watched one video probably six months ago, but hadn't watched it again recently through uh, Bronco Nation, uh, but real easy to do, so really like that. Of course, easy fuel cap is filler door, standard on these. Uh, of course, it's been on a lot of our Ford vehicles for a long time, but uh, some of the things there. Now, we'll be adding some rock rails on the side. In fact, uh, we decided because of the height of this, and I know that it's going to get lifted up a little bit more uh, with the, the bigger tires I'm going to put on it, that getting in it's a little bit tricky for the wife as well as the grandkid can't even get in there. <laughs> he likes to get in himself. He's, uh, he's four and he likes to get himself. Uh, so we're going to add some rock rails that kick down. So the rock slider uh, um, engineering, I believe, uh, company. They make them. We've ordered actually 20 sets of those for the dealership. And so I put my name on the set for that. So when those come in and become available, probably be about a month, we'll put those on there too. So again, we'll be doing a video on that as well. So looking forward to those. You'll probably, I probably added a screenshot to that. So uh, and then of course on the back, LED tail lights back here. It does have, of course, the tow hook in the back underneath the tag. Probably won't change any of that out. I won't probably put a tag on the back. Uh, of course, keyless entry for the back as well. So if you have it locked, you don't have to unlock it even for the back as well. And then you can lock the back. So if you get to put things in there, then you can go ahead and lock it up. There you go. I have noticed that I need to keep, I have to keep my fingers clear because even if they're on the ridges, I barely have to go inside and it unlocks. And so I've noticed that I have to make sure that I, there you go. So I've noticed there's a little trick to those, a little different than it is on our Expedition. But uh, so that's a kind of the walk around on the outside of the vehicle here. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna jump inside and we're gonna turn this around a little bit and show you the inside of it. All right, moving to the interior. It was kind of nice putting, I did put this, uh, move this, uh, 
roof uh, back or the, uh, the top back and I think that's going to be very convenient and different than on the um, you know the hard top you know you have those panels that you take off and then you have to be able to store them with this one you know that top doesn't need to store other than if I take the back pieces out so I do like that plus it gives me some more light in here so you can see me a little bit better so inside of course I you know of course love the interior this is totally different than it is for about any other Ford vehicle uh, in the lineup you know I've done videos about every Ford vehicle uh, model and such and the screens and everything are just are exclusive to the Bronco, some to the Bronco Sport, um, but I really love that. So the productivity screen here in the middle, you do get your speedometer over there, but also very uh, nice digital screen. I think that's a six inch digital screen if I remember right. Uh, so you're gonna get that as well, even on this Big Ben tram. Uh, of course, you know, I didn't kind of mention it, but you know, off-road capabilities, everything underneath is all the same, on whether it's the base, Big Ben, Outer Banks, even the bad or the uh, black diamond all have the same functionality in a way of performance. So, you know, I've had some people say that you're settling by going Big Ben, but I'm I'm really not. When you look at the difference between the base, the Big Ben, the black diamond, and the um, outer banks, if you look at those four trims without going other than going to the ba the Badlands edition, you know none of those all those are are set up that way. The only difference is the black diamond, which is made to go off road, comes standard with the front and rear lockers. Otherwise, other than the rear the front and rear lockers, performance wise, everything's the same between all four of those. So I don't feel like settling with the big band instead of the outer banks is settling because I didn't want the body colored accents. So I wanted to kind of make that clear. Some people said, oh, you want Big Ben just so you could get yours quicker. Now this is a trim I actually chose. And then when Ford said, hey, this is a trim, this is the, the configuration you want if you want to get yours quicker, I was like, great, because that's all my specifications. I just got lucky um, with that. But I kind of wanted to, uh, to discuss and talk a little bit about that before jumping in. So of course, this one does have the mid package. Uh, so it does have the leather wrap steering wheel, which is something that I really, really like. Uh, also does get the dual zone climate control. So the driver and front passenger are gonna have two different temperatures. Very important, because uh, wife and I are always varying on that. And so I do like the dual zone climate there uh, with that system and the automatic. Plus you get the heated seats with the mid package too. So uh, of course, cloth seats are standard and I really love these. These are very comfortable. Uh, Ford, I will say, I don't like the headrest. Um, I really would like to see those headrests be able to be adjusted forward and back like a bunch of other vehicles are. You'll see the reason we have this and up is just because my wife's a little short, shorter than I am when she sits there. So now she doesn't hit the top of that. And so, you know, I still do and it still bothers me a little bit, uh, but she, her head sits, you know, right under there. So she has a little bit more uh, clearance there by moving that headrest up. Uh, like you're seeing where it's positioned now. So that's something that I wish I could afford would do. That's one of my dislikes to uh, the Bronco is these headrests. Uh, you know, just give us adjustable ones. I'm uh, not sure why that's, that's a problem there. You know, Expedition used to have these same styles and it used to be a big negative to the Expedition and then they came out with it and allowed on the XLT to come with that, the adjustable one, and now people are a little more happy about that. So anyway, so that's uh, some of those features, dual zone climate, also you, I get that, we get the outlet behind the console too, back there, so 110 outlet on the back of the console that comes with the mid package. And I'm sure I'll remember some other mid package uh, capabilities uh, with this, but uh, so I love that. Of course, this does have the lane keeping system too, uh, another deal breaker for our family is that lane keeping system. And again, probably won't go out of town other than going off-roading and getting to the off-road places uh, with this. Otherwise, it'll probably stay in town for the most part. But lane keeping system is something that we found very convenient. I like it. Um, you know, I don't use it, I uh, utilize it as much as maybe some people do. I like the, the alert system more than the aid system. That's just my preference there. Uh, but, you know, on our vehicle that we, we go out of town with, we have that adaptive cruise control, which we like. This does not have that, which would be something you get, I think, with the high package or the Lux package. Uh, but uh, don't really need to go up that, that route just for that. So, again, really like uh, all those, uh, the how everything's positioned here on the steering wheel. Love that. Uh, and then, of course, the screen, I'm still getting used to uh, how that navigates. Might be doing a video on that as I learn more about the display on that. 
uh, and what it can do there. So uh, really love those, all those features. Sync 4 system, love the Sync 4. Been, I've done some videos, some how-to videos on the Sync 4 system. You can check that out on Law MacArthur's YouTube channel. Uh, love that system. Uh, also, um, Sirius XM reached out to me uh, because now if you have a Sync 4, Sync 4A system in a Ford vehicle, you uh, it can it'll come with the Sirius XM with the 360L, which I did not realize all the capabilities that has. I'm going to be doing a video on that as well. Thanks, Sirius, for or for you know touching base with me uh, and, and and teaching me a little bit about that system so that I could be able to do some videos uh, on that. So I'll be doing a video. Um, in fact, I'm going to record it after this video. Uh, here and I'll be doing it on my Loma MacArthur ch uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but I love the Sync 4 system and how that works. I love the wake up word, being able to just be able to say certain commands instead of having to press the button. That's kind of a, a nice convenience. And not hear that, that wait for that little that sound before we uh, start giving the commands uh, like that. Getting a little hard to get used to just because of the fact that I've been so used to waiting for that little that little tone there to be able to, to say the commands. But I uh, love the Sync 4 and how that all works there. Uh, and then, of course, nice, the grab handles here, which are a nice touch as well. Uh, still getting used to the power window switches being here on the console, but I like where they're positioned. Of course, there's a, a purpose behind that, as well as the mirror switches. Uh, the GOAT modes, I've been pretty much just, just leaving it in the normal mode. Of course, just driving around town right now. Uh, but this and I will have the, I have the GOAT modes. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, turn this on here. I just put it in accessory mode for right now. I think I should still go through the drive modes with that. Um, turn that fan speed down. Okay, so if I go through the GOAT modes, uh, I uh, just kind of, so you know what I have. Um, I have the normal, I have the eco mode, I have the sport mode, I have the slippery mode, and it shifts it to four by four on that one there. And then I also have mud ruts, which is uh, something that we used at the off rodeo event there. Uh, this and having the, uh, the rear locker, uh, mud ruts, it automatically engages a rear locker if you have the rear locker, which is really nice to have. So that's the mode you want to put it in. If you're going off roading, you want to make sure you want to have that in that mode. And then, um, let's see what else we have. And then we have a sand mode. Uh, and I believe does that keep that engaged? Yes. So it puts it in four high. Uh, automatically for us so we don't have to we can do it manually if we want instead of going through the modes but or we can just choose the mode so in this case when I go to the sand mode it puts it in four high and it engages the rear locker um, same way when I go I think that's my last mode yep and then when I go to mud ruts it also keeps it in four high and engages that rear locker if you have it um, and then when I go to slippery mode, which is, you know, normally if it's raining on pavement, that's where I use the slippery mode. It automatically engages four high, but not the rear locker uh, that way. And then, of course, going back to the um, sport mode. Now, sport mode, what it's going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to shift it back into too high. Um, so what sport mode is going to do is just a shifting of the transmission. It's going to hold those gears a little longer. So that way you're, you have that, the power rated to go. So it's going to kind of keep in those. It's going to shift it. It's going to stay in those gears just a little bit longer so you have a more performance type of drive. Uh, and this vehicle probably won't do the sport mode uh, very often. Eco mode is supposed to just shift a little bit more efficiency, maybe a little early. Uh, so uh, that way it gets the best fuel economy there. And, um, and then normal. So I'll probably keep it normal most of the time with this one. Um, and uh, I do like in the F-150 of putting it in slippery mode on pavement because that one has a 2.7 uh, EcoBoost and I just feel like I just, I, my tires spin um, when I'm, when it's raining on pavement with that. And so a lot of times I'm going to slippery mode with the truck. We'll see how this one does and how it grips uh, without doing that. So uh, anyway, so again, push button start. Uh, I think that is part of the mid package as well. I uh, love the push button start and having that. Um, I did upgrade for the auxiliary switches up here just in case I want to add any lights or anything to the truck. They're already there. I think they, the wires run and they're uh, located underneath the hood there so that way it's real easy to be able to get to those and each one come out and they come out in different places uh, so that it's real easy to be able to find those. If I want to add those myself, I'll be able to do that. Uh, auto dimming rear view mirror. Uh, not sure if that's part of the mid package, but I, I believe it is. Uh, so I'll we'll have that auto dimming rear view mirror comes in real handy. So you don't have a lever to worry about, you know, if someone comes up behind you with those bright lights or whatever. Um, and then let's see what else um, with this. Um, this one does have also uh, all of them with an automatic transmission will have the trail turn assist. 
as well as your traction control. Those are standard on any automatic transmissions. Uh, trail turn assist was real fun at the off rodeo event. Um, got a chance to, to try that out. Um, that's really cool uh, feature if you need to really turn uh, real quickly, then that's it. Uh, kind of a nice little uh, tip on that is give it gas because uh, it needs that gas for that to, to stay into place and, and to rotate around. So you want to make sure give it a little more gas than you think you need to. Uh, so like that up there. So I'll probably be putting a mount on this because I have seen the little kits where you can have the GoPros up there. So I'm probably going to get one of those as well for this. Um, and then, of course, in the back seat, I actually have the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, grandson's car seat in there right now you can you'll see that in the, the video footage also ordered the all-weather mats actually didn't realize i ordered those but love those and this is why i probably think i could have gone black diamond because i really love these all-weather mats weather tech they seem to be slick to me and i'm afraid that when i get in they go to, to put my foot in there that i'm just going to slide especially with my dress shoes uh, so i love these all-weather mats ford did a good job on these i love the texture of those and i love the logos and everything on those uh, the seats as well so i don't have a power uh, seat but i do have a manual adjustment for height so it'll go up and down so you can see that going up and down i have a manual lumbar adjustment over here that's this dial and then i do have one for the backrest so those are my adjustments over here and i think over there uh, i think you have one for the backrest and then yep the seat does go up and down for the the passenger over there too uh, as well over there so i think i've covered all the interior features uh so really love it uh love the feel of it love how it drives uh just it's amazing it you know my f-150 i hit a couple bumps that i normally go to on my daily drive and i hit it and you know the truck goes like this and on this bronco it just kind of just smoothly goes over it so the shock system on this is so much superior uh, even on the, the stock big ben than you'd think it is uh really love that system uh so just drives great so let me get on the outside kind of do some recap and tell you what some uh, some future plans we have here so there you have it there's kind of a walk around on my uh bronco here and how it was ordered and everything so really love it i uh, did not get the all-weather mat in the back really wish i had um, i will be getting on the the roush package i'm getting i will be getting an all-weather mat or the weather tech mats for the roush i'm going to keep though the, these in here because i like them better but i'll probably since i'm getting a uh, mat for the back for the bron part of that Bronco package. I'll probably just use it in the back part of that uh, But anyway, you can see I lifted this up. It only takes a second to do I can do it by myself um, this in here um, Real easy There we go lower down and then I just got all I have to do is these little levers here Just have to press those levers up a little tight there, but then there's one on the other side uh, I can either go around or I can even get through it from over here and it's in place uh, real easy to do just pull those levers and fold it on back and uh, so that way you're set to go there and i, I like this it, you know one th i will one thing i'll say is yes you can hear things on the outside it's a cloth top versus a hard top um, a little bit differently but i love the convenience of this and even now you know it's been co pretty cool of uh, last couple mornings in here so i wondered how temperature wise it's going to feel inside but it gets warmed up real quickly especially if you use the remote start four pass connect to uh, remote start your vehicle with the heated seats um, you know it just warms up the interior so well and it's not cold in there you know i mean and, and it, i haven't seen like 20 degree days but it's been like 30 40 last couple mornings on the way to work and uh it's not cold inside so i'm not really worried about the cloth top over the winter i'll probably i'm going to drive this for a while about every day so far i've gotten it i've driven it other than a couple days the wife's been driving it so i really like that and i like the flexibility of being able to just flip that back i want you on a nice day the sun's out gets up there you know we just got ours so i really wish we'd gotten it earlier in the summer we could really enjoy it a little bit more but you know flipping that up is so convenient so easy uh, she did say the grand <laughs> the grandson when we flip that open, he gets a lot of air on him. Uh, so, um, so maybe not when he's in there, but for the front seat, it felt great. Didn't hear, didn't have a lot of it come on my face, even with the windows open. So it just feels real nice. And then these, these things come off real easy and I'll be doing a video on how to take those off. So you can see that 
real nice and easy. Uh, it was a little tricky putting it on the first time, but I think I learned something that'll help me out after, from here on out to be able to put those on a little bit easier, put them back on, I should say, a little bit quicker. I think it took me about 15 minutes to put them back on uh, just the first time I did it, just because I hadn't seen any videos on how to put them back on. I didn't watch them clear through or remember them, I should say. Uh, but anyway, so that's a, a little bit of walk around on this uh, My Bronco. Again, we'll be doing some other videos, uh, how, how to take the top off, uh, how to take the side panels off and put them back on. Uh, we'll be doing some of those. We'll be showing you some videos when we get the rock rails on here, uh, what those look like, as well as when we get that Roush package too. And then we'll do it. We'll do a little drive video as well. So be uh, looking for those videos. Um, no guarantee on when I'm going to do them. I don't do uh, videos as regularly as I do on the Law MacArthur channel on this channel. So I'll do those when I get a chance. Um, but here pretty soon I will try to do a video that kind of goes over um, kind of a little background about myself. I did promise that out there. Now that we have a few more subscribers, I'll try to get that done because uh, there are a lot of people that are subs now that subscribed that watch the live streams. And so I think some of you really would like to get a little more insight about who I am, uh, some of my background and how I decided to come over to sales and some of the things that I've done at Law MacArthur. So I'll be doing that uh, type of video as well soon. Uh, of course, if you're, if you're wanting, you're interested in that, that type of video, Drop it down. Let me know down in the comments. Love getting that feedback uh, so that you can, uh, I can make sure that I give you some things that you might like. So again, thanks. I really appreciate all those that have subscribed to this channel. Uh, this is more of a personal YouTube channel about some of my, the vehicles that we own, some of the vehicles we drive, some of the different uh, things that I can provide on this channel. So uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, I really I appreciate it if you uh, follow our, our Law MacArthur channel as well. But uh, for you to come over here probably means that you're, you're wanting more videos from me personally. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm just floored at the, the community and how many people really uh, respect what I do at the dealership level. And uh, so I just really I want to thank you very much. Uh, for what you do. I'd give you a like if I could, <laughs> but I do appreciate all of you out there that, that are subscribed to the channel watching these videos as well. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And don't forget if you want to share this out to any friends or colleagues, uh, feel free to do that. And until the next video, we'll see you later. Have a great day.